In this video, we're building a Pokedex with Superbase and NX to show you how you can build better with NX. We're going to start by showing the basic architecture of our system. Then we're going to show you how you can use NX to enforce programming to an interface using a literal TypeScript interface. And we're going to top it all off by using the provided Superbase client to implement that interface. So let's get to it. So to build our Pokedex, let's start with a basic design. I have on screen here a five second design for a two page application, where the first page we have a grid view of cards with some basic info for each Pokemon. And by clicking on a card, we'll link to a detailed view of the one that's clicked. On the back end side, we saw in our last video how to create tooling for a Pokemon database, and we're using that same schema in this project. Now in between videos, I refined the schema a bit and wrote a web scraper to get all the data we need off of another Pokedex site I found called sarahb.net. If you're interested to see that process, it's all open source and you can see how I did that in the repository link in the description in the NX application, sarahb-net gen one scraper. With our design and our backend already established, the last piece of the puzzle is now to figure out what exact information we need, starting with our homepage. We'll say what we need is a basic Pokemon info interface with an ID, a name, the Pokemon's type, its classification flavor text, an image URL, and we'll also add in its base stats and height and weight so we can add some sorting to make it interesting. For our detail page, we'll create a full Pokemon TypeScript interface with all the info from before, but we'll also add in some other data like capture rate, more stat data, and moves that this Pokemon can learn. So now that we have those interfaces in place, we'll make one last interface called the Pokemon Data Client with two methods. Get all basic Pokemon info for our homepage, and get full Pokemon data by ID for our detail page. And we'll export this from an NX library called Pokemon Data Client. What we just did here was use NX to enforce one of the main tenets of the Gang of Four, which is program to an interface, not to an implementation. If you're not familiar with the Gang of Four, this refers to the book Design Patterns by authors Erich Gamma, Richard Helm, Ralph Johnson, and John Vlasidis, who comprised this Gang of Four. And it's generally considered to be a cornerstone of modern software design patterns. To illustrate their point, we probably could have jammed the Superbase JS client right into our front end code and forgotten this step entirely. But there are some big advantages to programming to our Pokemon data client interface rather than the Superbase JS client or a specific implementation. As you can see from our diagram, we've added a hinge that allows us to disjoint our front end design from our back end architecture. If we were on a team with the interface in place, we could distribute the work between two engineers to work in parallel, using our interface as a defined agreed upon contract to synchronize our two engineers. Decoupling our front end from our back end architecture means that we could potentially switch out the back end for some other back end solution as well, like switching out Superbase for Firebase or AppRite without changes to our front end React components. This is further reinforced by our decision to create an NX library for our client, as we can treat everything but our exposed interface as black box implementation details. As we can see here, as long as the contract is maintained, we can have a fully working front end app with a completely mocked implementation of our client. With all this in place, our last step is to implement our Pokemon data client, and we'll use the Superbase JS client to do it. The method to get all basic data is mostly straightforward, as we'll select from our Pokemon table, and then we'll map our Pokemon data entity data held by our Superbase instance to our basic Pokemon info interface we'll need to return. The method we'll use to get our full Pokemon interface is a bit more complicated, and for this video we'll use the suboptimal approach that will work, but we'll need to make a few more network walls than we'd like. First, we'll use promise.all to get the data from our Pokemon table for the given ID, while in parallel getting data from our two Pokemon to moves many to many joining relationships, which are moves learned by level and moves learned by item. Keep in mind, while these are done in parallel, each select call is making its own network request. Then we'll gather up all the data returned to get our list of move details we need and make a select call to the moves table now before mapping our data back into our original full Pokemon interface. 
Again, the beauty of programming to an interface here is we didn't need to know any of these implementation details when we wrote all of our front-end code, and it all still works. For a link to a GitHub repository with all the code we've covered in this video, as well as a link to our live deployed Pokedex site, be sure to check out the description below. Also, be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and let us know in the comments if there's anything else you want to see. Next time, we'll jump into testing for our new Pokedex project, so when it's ready, you'll be able to click the link here.